so alike sometimes. <laughs> That's why they look so alike sometimes. They reflect a lot of things, their characteristics about their owners. And um, they're, if their owner is, say, um, you know, someone who is denying certain emotions within them, any emotion that's denied within the owner will be reflected in the behaviour of the animal. So it's not the emotion that the owner feels, it's the emotion that the owner chooses to not feel that is reflected in the animal's behaviour. Does that mean if a dog sense? loves you, you haven't got enough love in your own, in your own heart? Um, yeah, sometimes a dog or a cat will be very needy for your attention. How many of you have an animal like that that seems to be really needy for your attention? Yeah, That means it's a reflection of some feelings that you have inside of your own Feel inside of your own feelings, inside of your soul, that um, that you actually feel like you need attention, and that dog will just or cat will just reflect that need to you constantly, and so they will always be needy for your attention. Things like that. Thank you. The se thank you for that. The second half of my question was, what about uh, aliens such as greys and so forth, who were told don't have an emotional body and so forth, hence the alleged breeding program that they've been undertaking. Uh, are they classified? You mentioned that there were um, human beings in other places. Mm -hmm. uh, does that human beings include what I'd call a humanoid, such as a, a grey or something like that? There are, there are creatures in the universe that are like animals without human souls. Mm -hmm. But they have a, like, you know, like we have monkeys here that don't, do, do not have a human soul. Mm -hmm. And there are creatures around the, around the universe that obviously are all different types of creatures. Mm -hmm. They, those kind of creatures are all still animals. They all still reflect the condition of man. And so man's choice to, to, to cut them up and all those kind of things obviously is in disharmony with love. So, so it's that issue. But one thing I'd like to ask you is why are you so focused on those questions? Oh, all the well, questions that you could ask. Oh. Why is it those, uh, those questions that involve animals and... How do you know I'm not going to ask all the other questions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. Yeah, no, I just, it's just that um, um, in my, sort of, over the past 30 or 40 years, yep. I've been exploring lots and lots of areas of, um, uh, in, sort of in search, if you like. Yep. And, uh, um, you yeah, know, up in, up in uh, on the Sunshine Coast in Mullaney, we belong to a group... Uh, Called you the Euphoria Group, yep. which stands for UFO, which is a play on words. Yep. And a lot of the guys in there were very much into aliens and things like that. And, yeah. and a lot of channelings that have come through from spirits and so with people like Bashar. Have you heard of Bashar? There's a deeper reason though. Is there? Inside of you. I have an alien overshadow <laughs> overshadowing me, have An alien overshadowing me. Yeah. No, uh, those questions are very much intellectual in nature. Mm -hmm. And there's a real strong reason inside of you why you feel like you need them resolved. And it's fine to have them resolved. I'm not criticising that at all. I'm just saying, and this is something I'd like to say to all of you, is that every one of us are motivated, not by what we think we're motivated by, but rather by some soul things that are going on inside of our soul. And there's one thing that's going in some, inside of your soul, if I could point it out to you. Oh, just, <laughs> and that is that for human consumption. Well, you believe that you cannot have these answers directly from God. You believe that someone else needs to supply them to you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes sense, yeah. Now, now what's the question? What, is it, what, what would be the emotion within you that causes you well, to feel I feel that? disconnected from God, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. Hmm. So, so the, when we feel disconnected from God, what we do then is we start seeking outside of ourselves for answers, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't realise that actually each one of us can directly answer, ask questions from God, and if we have that connection with God, we will get those answers. So that's why I said to seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added to you. Yeah, right. If you seek first the kingdom, what will happen is that you'll seek first this relationship with God, and all of these other questions which are interesting, but not very developmental for your own soul, so, yeah. will all be automatically answered in the result, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. So, so let yourself just, uh, there's, earlier we were discussing some of the law of attraction events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, let yourself just feel about how disconnected you feel you are from God. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to tell ourselves that we're actually connected to God, how many of you really feel connected to God, honestly? Really honestly? 
I say one of the, I, I was at honestly time. at times. At times. Yeah, and I'm not saying to manufacture this. How many of us feel really quite disconnected with God most of the time? And we'd like to be connected, but but we don't really know what that's about, right? Okay. So so let yourself feel your own disconnection with God. See, a lot of times what we're trying to do with all of our emotional state is we're trying to feel what we think the end goal is, but a lot of times it's the emotion that's the opposite that's preventing that from being felt. So how many of us actually feel loving towards our husbands or our wives? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. You think about the last time you had an argument. You just think about that for a moment. Can you put yourself back there the last time you had an argument? Did you feel very loving then? Right at that time no, you were arguing? No. no, okay. But it only la for me it only lasts a brief moment. Before and there's the intellectual justification. Yeah, and, and it used to last a lot longer, but now it's a bit transient because I can I put another spin on it. And that's the problem. And I say, well, it's my choice that I act like that. And that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. You see, what we do with our soul is, here's our soul, right? Here's our soul. The emotion that we're feeling at the moment inside of our soul is anger. Let's say, in this case, it's anger with a man, right? And so then I go down the road of saying to myself, all right, I've got this anger, but, but really, this is only a little situation, so I can convince myself it's small. Or I can say to myself, oh, really, this is not that important, so I can convince myself now that my anger isn't that important. And I go down this track of convincing myself away from the feeling that's really there. Now many of you have got into that habit because this is what the New Age movement generally teaches you to do, right? It teaches you to do this. Here's where I am right now. Here's where I know I should be if I'm in a state of love. So here's the state of love that I'm aiming for sometime in the future. And what I do is I intellectually jump from one place to the other and in the process ignore this emotional baggage in between. You follow me? And what I'm suggesting to you is totally the opposite to that. What I'm suggesting to you is if you want this to be real, this state of love to be real, this emotional baggage is going to have to be experienced and released from you. Then that state will be automatic and you won't have to try to put any spins on it, you won't have to try to skip over to it, you won't have to try to intellectualise yourself to that point, it will just be an automatic place that you live in constantly without it trying at all. Does that appeal to you? To do anger it without trying? Anger doesn't have to be a negative emotion. Sorry? Anger doesn't have to be a negative emotion. And you can have both of those emotions together. And that is, anger another, anger. That is another spin you put on it. Mm. To be honest. Right? The spin is, the spin is that anger, what is, it, what is anger really? Fear. It's fear. Suppressed fear, right? So the truth is that when I'm in a state of anger, right, here's my anger, I have already put a cap on my fear. Yeah. Right? I've already done that. Now, what do, how does God want you to live your life? To put a cap on any emotion? No. 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 So let's say, what is my fear? Yes. That is where I've put a cap on <laughs> something else that I don't want to experience. Let's say it's terrible, like, how do you spell grief? Grief. Right. Right. So what I'm doing with my life, if, if I say to myself, oh, anger's not such a bad thing, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, I'm just saying it's there, it's present, and it means that I've already suppressed myself. I've already suppressed my soul if I'm in a state of anger, no matter what anger I'm feeling. It might be just a smidge of frustration. It might be just a smidge of annoyance, but it's still a suppression. Do you follow me? And because I've suppressed what's underneath, which is some fear about feeling some deeper emotions underneath, and underneath there, there might be terrible feelings, like really dark feelings of, I feel like I'm empty inside, right? Or I feel like I'm unworthy inside, or, you know, some really big, dark emotions might be there. And what we have a tendency to do then is just cover that one with that, cover that one with that, cover that one with that, and then tell ourselves that that's fine. I, I still think that I think that you can have all of those things and acknowledge all of those things um, and still have love as well. No, well, the truth is, right at that moment, while this is in you, if you you can acknowledge them, 
But, uh, but at the, if you're not choosing to experience them, then what's happening is the world is experiencing them for you. You are projecting it straight out onto the world. Do you follow me? So, so you, can, you can say, oh, I know these things are in me, but that doesn't help you. Knowing them doesn't help you. Experiencing them is the thing that helps you. It's the experience that will cause you to grow. On all of the new age paths that are around, around today, pretty much, all of them tell you to, or teach you how to avoid your experience. And I mean, I mean skip over your true emotional experience. You remember in the DVDs, um, how many of you saw the Second Days DVDs? Yeah? Do you remember that um, there was a channeling in there through, of Lucinda? Do yes. you remember that? Yeah. And Lucinda said that she was in the sixth sphere of spiritual development, mm -hmm. right? which was this, in this intellectual place right, of, of the highest amount of development in natural love that you can achieve without God. And that was where the ego resided. And that's where yeah, the ego resides and so forth. And she was in this place, and what she realised was that she wasn't being real about what emotions really existed within her. And she had to actually go down to a place in the third sphere where she learnt what emotions were within her. And when she learnt what emotions were within her, she was quite surprised, because she had intellectualised herself over them. You follow me? Mm. And what I'm suggesting to you is don't do that. Don't do that. It's a fictitious progression. It's not real. Now, you can feel that a lot when you go to different places or different people, groups of people, and you can feel sometimes, can't you? Mm. That hang on a sec, this person's got a nice, happy face. They, they seem like they're acting nicely towards me, but I can feel this really yucky thing coming from them at the same time. What's that? Mm. Right? You notice that sometimes, how it mm. feels fake? Yeah. Well, you need to trust that it is fake. And it's fake because the person has skipped over their experience and manufactured a condition of love intellectually, but there's no, there's, there's all these bottled up emotions suppressed in there as well. And with God, you're not going to be able to do that. Which is fair enough, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Like, don't, do you think God would want you to do that? I mean, God would want you to just feel everything you feel. Like. So, so if you choose to look at these, any of these feelings and then reason them away or tell yourself that there's stuff fine within you, that's fine. You can tell yourself anything you like. You've got free will. But the truth is what you'll be doing is skipping over the experience of these emotions and it's the skipping over of the experience of them that causes you to attract the same events in your life time after time after time. It's what you're saying if you say you have a flash of anger. Yep. You, you, you feel that and you, and you, and you stay with it uh, and you sort of suck what you can out of it and then you might find fear underneath that and then you, then you go progressively down like That's that. right. And progressively just ask yourself, I'm, like, if I'm angry, there's something underneath that. So I can even just say to myself, I'm angry and it's got nothing to do with this situation. It's got something to do with what's inside of me right now. Something underneath that I don't want to experience. And you don't even have to know what that is at this point really yet. But when you have become on a, a more desirous of feeling what's underneath, you'll automatically feel it. But allow yourself to see the truth, and that is that these things are happening. Don't start intellectualising this and say, oh, but anger's fine, you know, everything's fine. Do you feel fine when you're angry? Really? No. No. So is it fine, really? No. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You don't feel fine when you're there, so why would you ever want to be there? Right? And I'm not saying you won't be there, because you will. Every time you suppress my fear inside of you, you will get angry. Every time. So every time, how, I asked you to, to put up your hand about whether you had an argument last week with your partner. Most of you said yes. So what was happening right at that time? What was happening right at that time was you were suppressing a fear. What was the fear you were suppressing? Does anyone want to talk about what Yeah, I wasn't being hurt. You wasn't being hurt. And how does that feel when you're not hurt? Terrible. Yeah. Anger, I was frustrated and I was angry and it's like, you're not listening, you're not hearing. Okay. You know what you need to do instead? Feel not hurt. Just go into the tears of feeling not hurt. Go into the grief of that. And when you release that emotion, 
automatically everyone around you will start hearing you. But at the moment, if you think about your life, there's a lot of people, particularly men, yeah. who are not hearing you. And if you, if you link it back, you'll see that it even came, goes back to your father yeah, it does. not hearing you. Born with the wrong ear tag, you know, children need to be seen and not heard. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so that is the actual core emotion you need to experience. Yeah. When you experience that core emotion, your husband will automatically start hearing you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't if you don't believe me, try that. And I'll give you some examples in well, my life. Let's try that, because that happens to me. Yep. Yeah. Not yeah. all the time, but so the emotion that's being covered over by the anger is the fear. The fear that's covering over the feeling of, in this case, I'm not heard. And it goes back to that worthy or unworthy thing of, um, then I'm not, 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 not worth. I'm not worth being heard. That's it. Mm. Right? That's the child, that's the child emotion. And what I need to do is feel that emotion. And ironically, not only will all of this anger and fear all just automatically disappear, mm -hmm. but so will my law of attraction disappear. Mm -hmm. And what will happen from now on is I'll be hurt. And the reason why I'm not being hurt is I need to not be hurt to trigger that emotion. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Once I trigger that emotion and I release it completely, I'll, I'll be in a state where I no longer have that emotion in me, and when I no longer have that emotion in me, I will no longer attract not being hurt. I will attract the opposite. Mm -hmm. I will now be hurt. Mm -hmm. Can I give you a few examples in my own life where these things have happened? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I was flying back uh, from the US, um, uh, from the UK actually, back to Australia. <coughs> and I always check to make sure that the, uh, that the meals are right, you know, because I, I, I'm vegan, so I don't eat meat and I don't eat dairy products generally. And so I normally order vegan meals on my, on my flight. So I did all that. I've got uh, Mary, my girl, with me, and uh, we're both sitting next to each other. And I ordered the same meals for her because she's vegan too. And then, uh, lo and behold, you know, the whole 747, <laughs> it was a flight like, full of 350 people, gets fed. And I'm the only one without a meal. <laughs> I don't get a meal. And, uh, and Mary says, you know, you know, say something. And I'm saying, no. No, if I say something, then that, that's just skipping over the fact that I attracted this. I attracted not getting a meal. Mm. Right? I need to look at that. I need to feel about what feeling I feel when I didn't get this meal. That's what I need to do. Mm. And then she gets a bit upset with me saying, well, you've just been a martyr now, you know. And I said, no, no. I need to feel this emotion. So I go into the emotion and for about 20 minutes or so, I have a cry on the plane. You can get away with crying on the plane quite easy. That's, you know, you, you're flying somewhere, so you might have been missing someone. You never know. <laughs> anyway, so I was crying on the plane, and I cried for about ten, or th about fifteen or twenty minutes, and then, and the emotions I connected with to were being overlooked, and uncared for. Mm -hmm. So I just connected to those emotions, and one emotion that came up for me as well what, during this time was a feeling that uh, I've been giving myself for free to others all the time and yet nobody seems to want to give me anything, even when I've ordered it. Uh, so I went through that emotion as well. And two stewards come up and said, oh, you didn't get a meal. So I never had to put up my hand on it. They just came up to me. And I said, uh, no, I didn't get one. They said, what would you like? And I said, oh, I'd like a bowl of you know, pumpkin soup or something like that, and a, and a big salad if you've got one. Like, like I was going to get it, you know. <laughs> um, and they said, no worries, we'll see what we can do. And they came back five minutes later, later with a meal from first class with exactly th those things that I'd said. <laughs> yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Well, it's not so much that. I had to first process yes. the emotion yes. that caused the whole event in the first place. But then it happened. Then it happened. Yes. Right? I had to release from myself the underlying causal emotion first. Mm. Then Own it with ownership. Yeah, and completely, which means to experience Absolutely. it, not to skip over it. Feel it, to heal it. To feel it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Now I can give you lots of different examples of that if you want. Do you want more? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Have you got some examples of your own life? We've done that. Well, 
AJ, my biggest problem is frustration. I get incredibly frustrated with myself. Okay, frustration is an anger-based emotion. This time it's with yourself. Yeah. Why? I've never quite worked it out, but I think it probably goes back to unworthiness, uh, particularly as a child because I was sexually abused by a family friend and, and it took me a long time and I could tell nobody because I was, um, I was only seven and I was living with relatives. Um, Can I stop you? Because yeah. you're going to tell the story now yeah. and you don't need to. Let's, no, just, okay, let's just stop for a moment. Feel the emotion that you're going to describe by the story rather than telling the story. Just mm -hmm. let yourself feel it now for a moment. Just tune into the feeling, right? The feeling is that oh, I want to blame myself. I want to. I, I, you're feeling frustrated with you, mm. so you then feel you must be to blame for something. Yeah, I, I always felt I should have been able to pre prevent it, and I didn't know how. Okay, so go into the emotion that you actually feel that you are to blame for the abuse that happened to you. Actually, feel that. Let yourself feel that you are to blame. Mm. So it's not about saying, I, I can tell you you are not to blame all you want, but in the end it's not going to help you feel the fact that you are to blame. That's what you feel inside of yourself. Mm. When you feel that completely, you will know that you weren't to blame. Mm. Right? But you first need to feel that other emotion, the emotion that you've been carrying around all those years from, that ch from childhood. And that causes a lot of your self-judgment. Mm. Yeah. Because you do believe you are to blame. You have a lot of top, uh, self shame mm. that, that you were to blame, you, that somehow you created the events. Mm. Yeah, it's related to what you were told as well. Yes. At the time, yeah. If, yeah. You, if you think about what you were told. Oh, at the time. well, yes. I mean, every mother used to say to their, their daughter, don't let a man touch you. Mm. And I mean, it was hounded into you. It was, yeah. you know, dished up for breakfast, dinner, and tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of things inside of yourself mm. that you need to allow yourself to feel about that mm. self-shame that you have. Mm. When you feel the self-shame mm. and release that, then you won't keep blaming yourself for other things that happen in your life. Mm. But it's a, all of these emotions that are locked up in you are very childlike emotions, mm. right? Mm. And this is why we want to skip over them all the time. Because when you're feeling a childlike emotion, how does it feel? Childlike. 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 Does that feel powerless? Or powerful. <coughs> Which powerless. one? Less powerless. powerless. How many of you like feeling powerless? <laughs> no one. <laughs> and so, what do we go for instead? The powerful emotion. The powerful emotions are like this is where we think they are. We think anger and all that is the powerful, but in reality, it's not actually. The most powerful emotion you can feel is the actual causal emotion. Experience that, release that, and you will no longer attract any of those events. And you'll also not have that emotion inside of you ever again. Okay. You wanted to? Oh, yeah. Uh, I do. Um, it's on a slightly different track here. Mm -hmm. But in your DVDs, you're saying on the spiritual, there's different spheres. Yep. And it's not really just the same here on, on Earth in human sort of way. Right. What I'm wanting to know is, or has diet and lifestyle contributed to some of that? No. Is that for a short answer? Yeah. The only thing that contributes to your soul condition is the amount of love that's in your soul. And your soul then generates everything that happens to you. Everything, including what happens to your body. Every illness that's, occur that's created in your body is completely emotionally created. Every, every breakage or anything that you've had to your body is completely created by your law of attraction. Everything that's happened to you, the man you attracted, the woman you attract, the children you have, everything is all based around your law of attraction at the soul level. Follow me? Now the spheres that I'm talking about um, are dimensional spaces. And you can exist in those spaces while you exist in the physical. That is certainly true. Um, but, but it's not about putting yourself there. You can't put yourself there. Your soul has to be developed to a point of love to be there. You follow me? There's a big difference between trying to put yourself there and actually being there. So, for instance, I can convince myself that I'm a loving person, right? But that doesn't mean I am, does it? All that means is I'll, I've just convinced myself I am. Right? 
So what is the truth? The truth is what's actually happening in my day-to-day -day life will show me what's my law of attraction, what's actually going on in my life, what's showing me the emotional injuries and hurts that I have inside of myself that I'm holding on to still. Because they are what determines whether I'm loving or not. So let yourself see what you really are. And I know it's frightening, a bit scary, right? At times. Yeah? Or no? <laughs> AJ, as those emotions are experienced from, from like a mother, as, mm -hmm. as I experience them, what I actually notice is a change in my adult children. Is that possible? That's spot on. That's exactly what I happens. I just sort of see like them do a 360 before my eyes, you totally. know? And, it doesn't matter what age your children are, if you as a parent yep. deal with a causal emotion within you, yep. their behaviour will automatically change. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. You know, I've seen the whole four of them and it's like, wow, each one's done a exactly. flip. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a particular problem with a grown son or daughter, you know, where you're having issues or problems with that grown son or daughter, it's totally because of an emotion inside of yourself that you're not actually allowing yourself to feel at the causal level. And once you release that, your entire relationship will automatically change with them. And, and their relationships with the world has changed. Totally. You know, that, that's the thing I'm noticing. They're, yeah. They're, that's how powerful it is. You yeah. know, even from trouble with the law and, you know, crime and whatever, I'm seeing, you know, like this complete And they change. want to change and they want to do things differently all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very, very powerful. The soul work is very powerful. Would that also apply to if your, your parents were in spirit? If they had a, if they had a, um, if they dealt with an emotion, if they yeah. dealt with an emotion and, and came to a real, you know, another truth. Yep. That it would reflect on you. Totally. <coughs> yeah. Everything that they do in spirit is the same as here. Makes no difference. Yeah. 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 Someone else had a question. I was just going to say that would work the same for being a child. Um, if you sort of progress to a certain stage and evolve, then your parents have been different to you as well. Um, it doesn't work the same way with the children. Yeah, there's, a laws in, there's laws involved. And the reason why is because an adult has often impressed the emotion on the child. Whether it's subconscious or unconscious doesn't really matter. The adult has impressed the emotion on the child. If the child has to work through the emotion, without the adult working through the emotion. What happens is the adult has another emotion to deal with and that is why they didn't take responsibility for the emotions the child has had to work through. So there is another law of karma that affects the adult. You follow me? So if... But what about an adult child though? No, I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it's an adult child or anything. The, if, the, if the parent has not dealt with the emotion and the child is being forced into dealing with it first, then there is an additional emotion the parent will need to work through. You follow me? Mm -hmm. There are laws of compensation mm -hmm. involved in that process. The other way around is, is what, how things happen. If the parent works through the emotion, there will be automatic changes in the child. That being said, if the child works through an emotion towards the parent, the parent will often get into a state of guilt or shame or, or remorse. And if that occurs, then obviously it can be very powerful for the parent as well but only if they're willing to feel their guilt and shame and remorse. So then how do you resolve those issues then, as an adult child? Uh, it's not about... Uh, all of your progression is not about anyone other than you, initially, right? And that, what that means then is that if I take complete responsibility for all of my own emotions, no matter what they are, I can heal everything inside of me, whether my parents listen to me or not, mm -hmm. right? But if my parents don't listen to me, it's going to be a bit harder for me. And that's why there is an automatic law of compensation issue that affects the parent. So let's say, let's say one of my emotions was, as a child, I've been abused sexually. But as a child, I also went to my mother and talked to my... I was, I was, let's say, abused by my father. But as a child, I went to my mother and told her and she belted me. And this happens quite often where a child is actually punished for telling the truth about something that's happened with regard to sexual abuse. Now, the emotions inside of me are going to be quite bad, aren't they, with regard to my own sexual issues and my own gender-based issues, how I feel about myself, my own unworthiness. There'll be quite a lot of emotions that I'll need to work through. 
I can work through all of them without any assistance from my parents. That's the truth. But the fact that I'm being forced into work, to work through them without the assistance of my parents actually has another emotional effect on my parents later that they will need to actually deal with. The fact that they didn't listen to you, the fact that they didn't take, you know, deal with you differently, the fact that they treated you badly, or, you know, both parents treated you badly in that scenario I just gave, all of those things will need to be dealt with separately by the parents. Okay. That's the question. Same question, is it? Interesting you had the same question. Um, What's your law of attraction, Gabs? <laughs> I actually was going to ask that question. I'll learn another one. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. My so pleasure. I've got a, probably a bit more of a broader question just by uh, what I've been feeling over the last couple of months. It feels like there's a bit of a shift occurring and at a global level. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> I guess uh, there's two parts. Uh, can you put a little bit of a definition on what's going on? But the other part of that is um, a large part of our population uh, are not really wanting to see truth at all. Yeah. Um, well, maybe consciously anyway, and yeah. they're not ex exhibiting, exhibiting it. Yeah. Um, I get pretty angry with that. Yep. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's a, more the, the consumption and the, the lack of people wanting to do anything because they control or buy yeah. other stuff. I, I just find it really difficult to deal with. Yep. Um, well, let's look at the second question first because it's more personal. And So we said, right, the anger is at the top. So people are consuming. They're not seeing what they're doing. And, and you feel, the feeling that you have is quite upset about that. So how many of you feel that, like quite upset about what's going on on the earth? What, you know, these do, yeah, quite a lot, so it's common emotion, isn't it? So what would that anger be covering, do you think? Fear. So it's covering a fear. What's the fear? What's the fear, do you think, it's covering? Loss of control. It's helplessness. It's not in control, yes. A feeling of helplessness? Helplessness, yes. Um, but let's draw it down to something a bit more personal because it's my anger that I'm feeling. We're hacking into our future, which is a... All right, so uh, keep going with that. Uh, <coughs> so if they are hacking into your future, yeah. how does that feel? Well, um, it doesn't make our future very good. Uh, well, our future, I guess. Well, let's, let's now personalise all this. Because <laughs> all of our emotions... This is something... See, one thing we've been taught to do with a lot of the New Age stuff is to depersonalize our emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, my suggestion is if you want to progress on the divine love part, you will need to personalize all your emotions. Because mm -hmm. that's what it means to own them. They're all inside of you. Right? So this anger is inside of you. It's not caused by someone else outside of you. Even though we think, oh, they're raping the land. It's caused by the people raping the land. No, it's not. It's caused by something going on inside of you, this anger. It's triggered by people. It's triggered by people raping the land, but it's not caused by that. The cause is actually the emotion inside of you. Remember, this is all about what's inside of you. Inside me. Always look inside me. Right. So let's go deeper. I'm angry about those things. I feel some fear about my future. The fear about my future is... It's probably going to be short lived, so um, yeah. Uh, How does that feel? Well, yeah, I want to be able to experience life at its fullest. So All right, so you feel like your life's going to be cut short. You're not yeah. going to be able to experience things completely. All right, now let's rewind even deeper than that. In your childhood, how did you feel about your life being cut around and moved around by other people? Um, well, probably. At the top level, I was just pretty easy with it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, at a deeper level, yeah, it hurt a fair bit. Yeah. There's a deep rage inside of you about your childhood and how much you were oppressed and put in a box mm. and controlled by everyone else and the things you had being taken away from you. Mm. Right? And that's the emotion you need to feel. When you feel that emotion, and you just, and there'll be a lot of avenues, there will be a lot of little, like, you could say, little. Tentacles. tentacles to that emotion, yeah. 
And once you feel all that, that emotion at its tentacles, you will no longer get angry when somebody's cutting down a tree right in front of you. Yeah, and ironically, someone probably will never cut down a tree in front of you. Because your law of attraction at the moment is, you need somebody to cut down a tree in front of you to trigger this emotion. You follow me? Well, that solved my problem because I get distraught about fear, family, and stuff. But it goes back to mother. Because I see the earth as the mother, the thing that sustains us. And now you've gone through that, that's gone back to my childhood because my mother was one of those ones that was subservient because that was the way it was. And of course, I didn't grow up subservient. I mean, I came out kicking all the way through my life. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, so that's interesting. And we live on property that we've protected. And um, we've got a swathe through our property with a, a water pipe which doesn't belong to us. And they came and cut down the trees to have it. And look, I just went out and cried mm. because, and now I know why. Exactly. And I'm feeling that emotion and That's it's it. about my mother. That's it. Yep. And, it's, and if that emotion was gone, yep. they probably would have chose somebody else's property to put their just water No, back. sorry, <laughs> the pipe's there. No, they would have. I mean, if, would. Before, the pipe's already there and there's there's got to be a certain amount yeah. past the pipe. But they would have chosen another property yeah. to do it with, not yours. I was there when we went there. So yeah. perhaps I went there to deal with my mother issues, you see? Perhaps. <laughs> Who knows? You attracted it though, either way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I guess like the second part, um, which like chopping down trees and stuff, I, I am quite used to that. Um, I'm more, there's a, there's a deeper thing that's going on for me in um, in awareness of what's going on on the earth. Yep. Because, um, I mean, I personally believe and I, you know, see this is that we're currently, even us sitting here, the way we live is unsustainable. Exactly. For, for, our, for our birth. Exactly. Um, and we do need to make a massive change for us to be here yep. for any length of time in the future. Yep. Um, which I'm, I'm, I can deal with that. Yep. In, in, well, I might not be able to do it. Can I just can yeah. I just answer that part, and then we'll go on to the other parts that you want to ask? Yeah. And um, every shift in the feminine is what I was going to get to. Yeah. So everything that is happening right now to the earth is unsustainable. So, mm. and the question we need to ask ourselves though is, what do we change to make it sustainable? Now, the answer that many of you will probably think of is, oh, we could do this thing, and we can do that thing, and we can do this thing, and we can do that thing. Mm -hmm. My answer to you is, you change your soul and everything will change around you automatically. So if you change your soul and the soul becomes more loving, and the way you change your soul is release the parts of that, of it that are inside of you that are not loving. If you release that, what will happen is automatically every single thing around you will automatically begin to change and all of the attractions will change and everyone's consciousness will begin changing as well as a result of your soul changing. Right? You won't have to go out and do a protest. right? Because what is a protest? It's an intellectual expression of your... And what does that create more? And in the end, it does it work? It hasn't, has it? You look at it really honestly, it hasn't. If you change yourself inside of yourself at the soul level, you change your feelings and emotions, welcome. You change your feelings and emotions inside of you, what will happen is automatically everything around you will begin changing. Now you'll notice this a lot, again begging back to children. When a parent changes their soul condition by releasing a causal emotion, the children around them, and whether they're adults or not, it's immaterial, the children around them change automatically. They automatically change. Um, can I just ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. About parents. Can I can I just finish answering that question though? And um, because it, because what I want, what I'm getting at here is most of the time what we do with our own with what we're seeing around us is we see it as what's happening external to us. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And many times we look at them cutting down a tree or clear felling or whatever they're doing, and we we think that that is actually external to us, but actually. Our soul condition assisted the creation of that. And if I release my soul condition and make, it, and make it into another type of condition, that my soul will no longer have a part in creating that. 
right? Now, to give you an example, if my soul has an anger in it towards clear felling, I am actually creating more clear felling. Because what do I need to trigger that anger? I need someone to do that in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. And once I get to a point where I no longer have that anger and rage inside of me and I've dealt with the underlying emotion, which was going to be related to a childhood emotion about my future or scared about things taken off me or lots of other types of childhood emotions that happen and are created that I don't experience, what if I release those, all of a sudden people who are doing the clear feeling will actually start looking at why they're doing it. And that will happen automatically without me having to protest or without me having to do anything else. Does that make sense? Mm. I know it sounds like, no, that's not going to work. How, you know? Because you're not attracting it anymore. Exactly, you're not attracting it anymore. And, and, and the energy you're putting into it when you're really feeling angry and fearful is no longer there because you've got your energy, you've got your energy for love or whatever else. Totally. Remember, remember, I think I said in the introductory thing that here's our soul, right? And I'll constantly say, what, what is your soul? Your soul is your passions, your desires, emotions, emotions yep. intentions, memories, intentions. These are all part of your soul, right? Fear. Now, if my intention is to fight somebody every time I see something happening that's wrong, if that's my intention, I I'm determining firstly that it's wrong. So that's me making a judgment, then I then go down the track of fighting them because I now am putting a, you know, oh, what am I doing now? I'm putting all of my passion and desire into opposing things. Mm -hmm. But what created that thing? My own soul condition of something even deeper within me that I'm actually not facing. That's what created that thing. And collectively we all create in this manner. Could I just interject there for a second? You mentioned collectively. Uh, at the moment, there's a lot of angst in uh, in Tasmania, with uh, tens of thousands of people objecting to guns and, and the Forestry Commission, whatever they call it, yeah. over here. Um, say, if, um, if one single person, say any one of us here who's feeling particularly angry, uh, changed their soul condition, you've still got another 19,999 <laughs> people who are, who are uh, wanting to tear guns to pieces. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, is that just going to mean that uh, well, before your first um, DVD, uh, I used to think you'd go into another dimension where guns wouldn't exist. But now I'm, not quite, I'm rather confused now. So. Okay. <coughs> what will happen is that uh, if you change to the point, if you change this soul to the point where you're actually at one with God, mm -hmm. every single person in Tasmania will know automatically that you're in that new condition. And you'll be able to do things like healing. You'll be able to, you'll be able to do things that people from all around will just flock to you for your advice and your, you know, they'll flock to you. That's what will happen. And they'll flock to you not because you're anything special, but because you're now connected with God and you're in harmony with God so much. You're now at one with God, and God can now channel all of her energy. God can channel all of her thoughts and her feelings through you. Right. Now you imagine yourself in that place. Do you think the other 19,000 are going to listen now? Well, they might not know it though. They will know it, for sure. For sure. <coughs> how, how did a movement begin from a, from a single man in the first century to, be, to, to change the world, really, in a lot of ways? Mm -hmm. right? How did that begin? From one person. Mm -hmm. So they'll know. Mm -hmm. And you imagine if there's 10 of you, or you imagine just 20 of you in that condition here in Tasmania. The effect is, is going to be so enormous. It's, the effect is that once you get into an alignment condition with God, every single person on this earth, whether they are aware of it or not, will know. Right? And they will, they will be drawn to you or repelled by you, depending on how much truth they want in their life or how much truth they want to avoid. But it's your soul that is the powerful thing. So if I'm just if I'm having this anger, and I'm one of twenty thousand people having this anger, and and there's one less people person now having the anger, 
now there's only 19,999 yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. There's got to be a better effect. But if my soul was in an abundant condition without this anger, that will, and that compensates in many cases for millions of people in a state, in a different state. Right. And so it's important for you to understand that you might begin the journey, deal with one emotion, and that might, you might just see a little bit of change around you. You know, you might see your children change a bit. You might see the work situation change a bit and so forth. And then you deal with another emotion, you see this bit change and that bit change. You deal with another. And before you know it, what's happening is the sphere of changes around you is getting bigger and bigger with each emotion you release. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, ha have it saying, well, if I don't start that process, I'm hardly having any effect on someone else. Well, that's true right at the beginning. What you're saying is true right at the beginning. What's one less person than 20,000? Not much. But if one doesn't start the process, will the others ever start it? Like, you've also got to look at it that way too. So you're, what you're saying is slightly different from the 100th monkey syndrome. Yeah. 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 The most powerful things that have ever happened in the world usually have come from one person changing. You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you think of all the powerful things that have happened that have affected you and affected the way you think and affected you on your spiritual journey. How many of them involved like 100,000 people? Most of them, didn't they involve one person? <laughs> you think about it. And while the 100,000 people doing it is fantastic and you feel lots of joy about that, it's the one person generally who inspires you, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah. So you can all become inspirations for everyone around you yeah. in the same manner. So understand that this is your soul. This is the real you. This is the power you have. When these passions and desires and emotions are exercised in disharmony with God, then you're going to create some very negative things in your universe, which happens to also be mine. <laughs> And if your passions and desires and emotions and, thing, and intentions are harmonious with God's love, you're going to create some very powerful things that are going to affect me in a powerful way. Whether I'm conscious of it or not, it'll affect me. Something to think about a bit, huh? Are you saying that, that the harmonious um, emotions are more powerful than disharmonious emotions? Or, or, yeah. Totally. And this is uh, like every every person who's in a better in a in a condition of closer love to God. So in other words, in a in a better condition of love, has a far more powerful effect on the world than people that are in negative conditions. Like you give you an example, and all of these people I just mentioned that inspire you. Does a murderer that you see on death row inspire you? No. You hear about it, don't you? And you think, but but does it change your life? Not really, in most cases, does it? It doesn't inspire you. So who had the most power over you? Wasn't it the person who acted positively in their life? And, taught and, and, the love, yeah. and, and reflected love in their life? Wasn't that the thing that had the most power over you? Yeah. Love has a lot more power than any negative experience. I think of Mother Teresa sometimes. And yeah. All her good work. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, there's a lot of just everyday people. Think about Jane McGrath with breast cancer. I mean, she inspired many, yeah. and that was through love. Exactly. It would have had to have been. I mean, yeah. they're everywhere. You know, and yet, you, you even compare her with, say, a murderer in Queensland that you've never heard of, and yeah. you've probably never think of. Give a moment of thought right now. Huh. But she is inspired you. Yeah. yeah. What about um, on the other side of things? Then, <coughs> if there is another side of things, whatever I'm kind of is that uh, there's somebody that is supposed to be the most powerful person in the world for a couple more months at the moment, and he doesn't really inspire me, Mr. George Bush. <laughs> so I'm wondering, like, he is inspiring a lot of people, but I'm just wondering, is it because they're knowing the truth that they're inspired by? He, he, he is. Um, I mean, he's done that. that kind of he's thing. inspiring very few people. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many of you in the room are inspired by George Bush? Well, they voted for him for a second. Oh, oh true, but I've, I've been to the US many times, yeah. and there's hardly any people in America who think they're inspired by George Bush. Yeah. But they wouldn't believe their country. 
Well, see, yeah, a lot of see a lot of Americans that are inspired by their country, not by a particular person, and even that has its own roots in some very severe emotional injuries. I was going to say they've done a fair bit of crap in your name. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, and that but that applies to every country, not just that country. But it is yeah. in Australia as well. It's got a rather bad history. Yeah. It? Yeah. So, so yes, a lot of these people who are in power have nowhere near the amount of power that you believe they have. Mm -hmm. right? we well, give, you see right through them. I mean, well, we give them our power in the end, don't we? Mm -hmm. Like, how many of you, like, you think about the government you're under right now here in Tasmania, like, how many of you automatically give, you, give your power to them because you feel you can't do anything else? If you did something else, you'd be put in jail. Or if you, you know, if you didn't pay your taxes tomorrow, what would happen to you? So what's driving some of our emotions? Fear. 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 Yeah. yeah. Imagine if all of us all of a sudden started to decide differently. So we all decided, no, no, I'm not going to pay any tax anymore. Let's just make that one decision. Do you like that one? <laughs> okay, well, let's agree to not do it then. <laughs> now, let's say uh, 10,000 people in Tasmania decided to do that. Just 10,000. How many, what's the population here now? Five, nearly 500. 500. So we're talking about what? 10,000 is about what? How many percent? Just a, yeah, just a couple, maybe a percent. Let's, let's choose a percent. Like. But if everybody did it, it'd be fine because we'd have a good time in jail. <laughs> because there'd be lots. We'd have. You lots haven't got there. enough jails to ha to even put you all in. No, true. You haven't got enough courts to even process you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think about trying to process just ten thousand people all with the same issue, like one by one by one by one? How hard is that going to be? Can you see how easy it is for just a few people to change things just by being in harmony with their own desires and in harmony with truth and not being afraid? Right? But we don't do it, do we? Because all of us start getting afraid. And then when I get afraid, I renege. Right? In other words, let's say if we all made a pact today and then we had, had, had a thousand people here and we all made a pact, we weren't going to pay our taxes this year. The first person that gets under the attack Let's say they renege on because they're afraid. And then the next person gets attacked. And then they get all worried about what's going to happen. So they get afraid. Can you see how fear also affects us so much? But if we all dealt with our fears emotionally, we'd all stand firm, wouldn't we? And all of a sudden, everything would be different. And that's how easy it is for everything to be. It just means that each one of us needs to stand firm, which means that we need to get rid of in this soul all of these things inside of it. Right? We get rid of those things inside of it, there's something totally different inside of it now. Now we, we're able to stand firm for principles, for truth, for how we feel. If it's, not harm, if it's out of harmony with love, we don't do it. And if we all stay firm on that, the world changes very rapidly. So, how do you deal with um, persecution if that is going to be one of those outcomes? Well, I've had persecution in my life. I've been just here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Um, <laughs> in both centuries, actually. And the the way to handle persecution is the same way as everything else. Why why do you feel you need to handle it? Because I'm afraid. If I'm afraid, then there's a there's a belief in me that is actually false. There's a belief that I have. So all fear is. You can think of it as false expectations appearing real. Mm. Right? Mm. So if I'm afraid of being persecuted, what am I really afraid of? Pain, isn't it? Isn't it mm. just pain? I'm just afraid of somehow being hurt emotionally or physically. Mm. Isn't that what I'm afraid of? Or I'm perhaps even afraid of dying, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. Right? Is there any such thing as death, really? No. No. But I, if I'm afraid of it, then I, I'm, I must think differently inside of myself. So, like, how many of you, for example, with death, um, would not cry if your son or daughter died? You wouldn't cry at all, not because you have no emotions, but because you just completely know they're still alive. Right? How many wouldn't cry? Right. All right. 
So we would cry. So that means inside of us, there is a fear. There is a fear, right? So we have the belief in our head that there is no such thing as death. But is it real? It's not really real yet, is it? Because I don't believe it here. You know, I, how about the uh, removal of their company, though? It's not the lack of... But the, even that's a false belief. The truth is that they come and visit you every day, it's just you don't even know it. Well, removal, con remo uh, conscious removal of their company. And know. that's not even true either, because... <laughs> well, like, suppressed this, conscious removal. <laughs> <laughs> these are, see, these are all emotions that yeah. we feel that we're unwilling to experience that cause these events. Mm -hmm. So so let's say I believe that I can't talk to my child who's died. So ha if anyone here had a child pass, okay, do you believe you can speak with them? Absolutely. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right? Now, if I'm speaking with them and I'm conversing with them, then how can I be worried about not having their company? Mm -hmm. Their company's there as soon as I long for their company. I think it's the touch, the tangible connection. Well, they can actually touch you too. Yes, I understand. <coughs> it doesn't seem the same. So, so what's my emotion I need to do with? You have a feeling of loss. Okay, that's you what I need to do with. You have a feeling of, of mm. disconnection. Yes. You have a feeling of things being different. And yes, you do go through the grief and all the anxieties. And you don't have that love and you haven't got that physical presence and, mm. and, the, and the joy. But the truth so is that once you get through all that and you love them enough to let them go, it's only then that you're able to come to terms within yourself. And I think that if anyone, any one of us lost our child, I really feel we would cry, but we'd have to go through all these steps to love them enough to let them go because then... Well, I'm saying you can actually deal with all those emotions before a child dies. Mm -hmm. And you can actually be in a state uh, that when the child dies that you won't feel any of those emotions. That's powerful. Right? Mm -hmm. And you can be in that state not because you believe, not because you are making it up in your mind, but rather because it's so real that you even continue seeing your child, seeing them, like we're sitting here, seeing mm -hmm. them, yes. Right? Yes. hearing them, yes. and interrelating with them on an hour by hour daily basis, whatever you need. So, so you've actually got through all of those emotions that prevent you from doing that right now. So, all of the reasons why, why we can't talk to spirits or we can't interrelate with different spirits in the past, it's all to do with what's going on inside of ourselves, actually. It's got nothing to do with anything else. It's not that you don't have the ability to do it. It's not that you're not special and somebody else is. It's none of that. It's actually because there's an emotion inside of us that prevents that connection. Does that make sense? And once we get clear those emotions, what's the reality? Reality is what we fear just completely disappears. And if we're not afraid anymore, they can't, and, and, we're, and we're in constant communication with them, how can we be sad? Can I tell an interesting story about that? Just a short one. After my son died, my daughter was sitting outside one night and she said to him, if there really is a heaven, move the unit, move, move the planets. And then she said, no, don't move the planets. You've got to throw it out of Pluto. Nine days later, they took Pluto off the list of planets. And she rang up and she said, well, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is far more significant things we can do, of course, too, to even find the answers to these things. That was just a funny little story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my best friend, uh, his name is John, he's the Apostle John, uh, was murdered 18 months ago. And um, there was a period of four days between when he was, uh, when he was stabbed and when he died. And uh, I was talking to him during that period of four days, so I knew all of his emotions that were going on within him while he was unconscious, laying in intensive care. And I knew the moment he'd made a choice to not, to, to not stay as well. And we continue, obviously, conversing now, and we continue feeling each other's emotions now. And so, in the end, like, when he did pass, I, I was more upset talking to him in the state he was in, in those four days, due to my own emotions, than I was when he passed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So he's been passed about uh, 18 months or so now, a bit more than that. And, uh, and 
I don't miss him because he's, I can feel when he's here with me all the time. So I don't miss him at all. Is that the same with animals? Uh, animals, of course, yeah, exactly the same. It's the same. Because I get grief stricken when I leave an animal, lose an animal. So that's a childhood emotion. Yeah. If, you can li if you can let go of that emotion, mm -hmm. I know that's something I need to do. <coughs> yeah. to yeah. I just get grief stricken. Yeah. And the, the key is to not condemn any of these emotions, right? Oh, no. You can't, like, don't I condemn do your that. anger, don't condemn your sadness, don't, like, all of these. Uh -huh. The key is just to own up to them and say, yeah. yeah, I feel this, I feel this inside of me. I need to release this, you know, from me. Now, there's another part of your question about the world changes. Wasn't there not? There was. There was. There is. There is. <laughs> and who's noticed there seems to be, like, yes. like people changing quite rapidly? Yeah? Something everyone's noticed. Why do you reckon it's happening? It's a good time to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose Shifting so. Shifting our awareness. Uh, what's causing your shift in awareness? Your message. <laughs> your presence. Yeah. What do you think it might be? Mm. We've, been, we've been taught it's time. This is the end time, you know. <laughs> 2012, 2013. Yeah. But in reality, your first answer was more correct, mm -hmm. and that is that it's the sole condition of many people changing and growing very rapidly, mm -hmm. and that causes a flow on effect to every single other person around them. So, all of these world change events that are going to happen in the future, and there will be quite a lot of them, mm -hmm. and I don't want to discuss them in too much detail because I don't want to cause you to have more yeah. fear. <laughs> I think a lot of us know, though, that there are going to be cataclysmic events that are necessary, but it's an illusion to you anyway. Uh, well, is it going to be an illusion to you when you find that your house is no longer existing when you go home? Mm -hmm. I don't live near the sea, so I don't <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't the question. <laughs> you, see, you see, emotionally, there will be emotional effects on us with all of these events. There will. Yes. Cool. And if I haven't dealt with a lot of these emotions of loss and all of those kind of things, of course I'm going to have emotions come up. Well, how many of you got, uh, got family on the east or west coast of Australia? <laughs> right? uh, near the sea. If your family passes, right, how are you going to feel? Obviously there are going to be emotions come up, right? Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not, saying, I'm not saying there's not going to be emotions. What I'm saying is you can get into a state yourself where you no longer feel those emotions because you know, you know exactly what's happening, you know you can communicate with them still and you can feel that still and all those kind of things. So there will be cataclysmic events occurring. Okay. Like physical loss though. There will be physical loss. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we have to deal with the physical loss because it's... But you can deal with that right now yeah, before exactly the right. events have even occur yeah. because they are all, all of the emotions you'd be feeling would be related to your childhood, mm. all of them. Mm. All of them be related to childhood emotions. And the closer you get to a one man with God, the less you'll feel any sense of physical loss. Yeah. Right? So for me, like having a house or a car or any of those things now, it's just like, it doesn't matter to me either way. Right? So whether I have them or don't have them. Yeah. Now that wasn't the case 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I was very different to that. <laughs> I'd had 13 houses. One um, could have more. <laughs> so just with that, um, so the the other part that I, well, and maybe this is just me, but I'm thinking it's probably not, that I'm a little bit in tune with some, some of them, and is the shift from um, like masculine domination in the energy form to the, if I, and correct me if I don't know the terminology, but I'm seeing a lot more um, feeling a lot more feminine energy starting to, there's a bit more of a balance, like it seems to have been very dominated by masculine. Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, obviously the last 2,000 years or even longer, it's been much longer than that actually. Yeah. Um, it has been male dominated. Yeah. But again, but there's paganistic a... Is, is it like a pagan feminist? Like no, well, see, there, there was a time in human history where females dominated, and then there was a male kickback to that, of course. Yeah. So, because you know, nature's... whenever any gender dominates, mm -hmm. obviously it's yeah, out of harmony. Yeah, it's right? 
So, so the key is to actually work through our emotional injuries as to why one gender feels like it should dominate. So how many of you ladies feel that you're angry with men? Let's be honest, girls. Generally or specifically? <laughs> generally. Just generally. I used to be angry with obstetrician. <laughs> so I mean, why? Yes. And, that, and that was because they made women do things that I didn't think they should do. Yeah. So, yes. You know what, ladies? Every single one of you, I can feel, has anger with men issues still. Mm. So there were quite a few of you not being honest in that question. <laughs> right? Now, some of you have a feeling that, just general feelings like this. And I'll pick on the men in a minute. There's a few of men, and we'll pick on the men in a minute. But um, some of you have feelings like this. Um, you can't trust a man. And if you trust a man, he'll disappoint you. You have, some of you have feelings of uh, sexual issues with men. That men just want to have you for sex. That if you don't give sex, then they won't love you. Some of you have a feeling, and I'm just listing some of the feelings I'm feeling from you generally here. Uh, some of you have a feeling of, um, if I open my heart to a man, he will hurt it. Shall I keep going? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's we'll talk all about. shake our heads if it's beautiful flowers or go like that. <laughs> but the interesting thing is that you've shaken your head as a no in all of those statements, and you, I can feel those, every one of those emotions in there. Interesting. I'll embrace that. Okay. <laughs> and. The reason why we often do this is because we tell ourselves that we're over things, when in reality we still really have some deep issues about these things. Let's look at our law of attraction. Let's look at the law of attraction as a woman, for, for yourself as women first, and then we'll talk to the men after that. The, what's your law of attraction? Do you feel you've attracted a loving man into your life? No. Yes. yes. Have you completely exposed everything within yourself to that loving man? No. Why not? No, I thought so. Some yeah. things I want to keep, keep to myself. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because you are yeah. afraid. Yeah. You are. I'm not saying it's not a question. <laughs> the only re like in the in the end, like if you want to be in, at one with God. You are going to have to be completely honest and truthful and open, naked, naked, emotionally, to your partner. That means no secrets, no withholding of anything. Like buying a new dress and putting it in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes home and says, oh, that's, that's new. You said, no, I've had it for no, ages. No, no, no. Yeah, like that. <laughs> exactly like that. Why do you say that? Because you're uh, afraid. afraid of what? Yeah. Of what he's going to say. say. What 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 he's going to say is what? Can't afford that. Well, you've you've got got too many. that. You've got too many or whatever. And then what's that going to make you feel inside? Guilty. Guilty. And how do you like feeling guilty? No. No, definitely not. So you feel that it's better to not say anything. Anything. Right? Now, just that choice to not say anything means you have an injury with the masculine. You follow me? Just yeah. that one choice means you have an you have an injury with the masculine, mm -hmm. and that is going to need to be healed if we're going to heal this planet. <laughs> you follow me? Yes. Yeah. Now let's look at it from a male point of view. Each of you guys, be honest here. How do you feel about women? How many of you feel that women control you? <coughs> oh yes. <laughs> How many of you feel that that um, women think they're better than you? <laughs> How many of you feel that um, if you give, keep, when you keep on giving to a woman, they won't ever let you into their heart? Any of you feel that? <laughs> so there's a lot. There's a lot of these. These are the emotions I'm feeling from this group. All right, different emotions that I'm just listing off. Now, now, if I have those emotions inside of me. 
then obviously then I've got injuries towards the feminine that I need to heal if I'm going to be at one with God. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And can you see how each of us can tell ourselves that we have no injuries? Right? We can do that, mm -hmm. but this, is, this path is not about telling yourself fictitious things. <laughs> it's about actually coming to see the truth about how I really feel inside of myself. That's what it's about. Well, I can't do that without a relationship. Let's say I'm not in a relationship. Do I want to be in one? If I want to be in one and I'm not, do you think I must have some injuries with the opposite sex? What's my attraction? Can you see what I'm saying? Like, if I'm not, a, if I want, if I'm saying in my mind I want to be in a relationship, and I'm not in a relationship, then obviously there's a discrepancy between what I think is the truth and what's actually being projected out to the universe because if I really felt like I wanted to be in a relationship, what would I be in? A relationship. Do you follow me? So there must be an injury that's causing this distance that, that repels the relationship. If, does that make sense? So again, there must be an injury that if I solve that injury, if I go into how I'm feeling, and in, in the case of that, many times it is I'm feeling alone, I'm feeling unwanted, unappreciated or those kind of feelings mm -hmm. and it will all be, if I trace it all back because it's with a man it will be related probably to my relationship with my major male role model in my past, mm -hmm. usually my dad right? it will be related <coughs> to some emotions there that I need to feel once I feel and heal those emotions I'll automatically attract the relationship mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So you don't go out to the pub every night to try and find a man. You don't go out to the pub. I know, I know, I'm just joking. Oh, so that's what I need to do. But you exactly. can be in a relationship and feel all those emotions too. Totally, you could. But they won't be necessarily related to the masculine. They might be more related to the feminine, how you feel about yourself. So there might be different types of emotions that you're feeling. If it's related to the relationship and you know you don't have a relationship, then it will be related specifically to the male. You follow me? So it just depends on what's going on with the law of attraction. Yes. If you're in a relationship and you express those emotions, how do you stay in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I have a feeling inside of myself, right, that I'm going to own all of my emotions, and this is something probably that I'd like to just say to you too, there are three primary things that you're going to need if you're going to do this divine love path thing, right? <laughs> Shall I call it that, the divine love path thing? Yes. Yeah, that's great. All right, the number one thing is going, you're going to need to be humble. Do you know what humble means? Can I give you a definition? Mm -hmm. Humble means that I am desirous of feeling all of my own emotions, whether they are painful or pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So I want to feel all of my own emotions, whether they are painful or pleasurable. That's what humble means. Now, you imagine in a relationship for a moment, just with that one thing. So I come home from the day at work, you know, the male comes home. And he says, you know, today um, I checked out five girls, actually. Uh, and I thought, that, I thought the four of them in particular, you know, I could easily go to bed with them. So this is what he comes home and says to you. And you'd say, why did you? <laughs> How would you feel? If you're a woman here and back. Angry. You could. You could. Yeah, no, no, no let's don't go down the could right, because that's all intellectual. Yeah. How many of you you go how many of you would feel hurt and angry about that? Quite a few, right? Okay. Now if I'm humble, what would I do? I said I'm gonna own all of my emotions, whether they are painful or pleasurable. Mm. If I'm humble, what will I do? Feel it. I might, I might curl up in the ball and in the floor and have a good cry. Mm. I'd be humble, feel those emotions of grief that I feel that my man actually projects his sexual energy to lots of other people during the day. You wouldn't go through rage first and tear his eyes out and then you go. <laughs> if I'm humble, I will never get into rage. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. But you're right, yeah, it's yeah. tempting. <laughs> But if, I, if I'm not humble, what I will do is get into a rage, get angry, want to have a fight, mm. want to, you know. Why? Because I'm avoiding the feeling that... You're hurting. What, why am I hurting? What's the feeling? My, my husband, partner, whatever, 
doesn't feel sexually attracted to me. What's my hurt? Unworthy of being loved. Sexually unworthiness, sexually isn't it? Unworthy. Sexual unworthiness being triggered. Yeah. So as a woman, there's a lot of things being triggered if I'm a woman experiencing that. Now if I'm humble, I will go into those emotions. If the man is humble, what would he do? He wouldn't say, oh yeah, you know, it doesn't matter where I get, you know, where I get my appetite, just so long as I come home and eat here, you know. He won't say that to you, will he? Because that's quite callous. Jealousy. Where would the man go? Jealous. Uh, I'm talking about the man oh, who's doing it. Oh, no. <laughs> the man well, he's on the definitely not jealous. No, he's definitely not jealous. He couldn't keep it stuff. <laughs> what does he need to do? He needs to own his emotion as to why he actually feels sexually attracted to other women other than his partner. He needs to go into that. He needs to go into that and find some deep core emotions about his own childhood that cause him to have that emotion. Right? Now if both parties in the relationship do that, of course they can stay together, can't they? Mm -hmm. But if one of them doesn't, then it's going to be very difficult, isn't it? Can you see how if both are totally owning their own stuff, but that invariably does happen in relationships, though. Um, invariably? Oh, not yeah. every relationship. Um, in ones that have got issues, you know, you find that many people are willing to go to get counselling or whatever mm -hmm. triggers to... And what do they get counselling about, generally? Um, about the relationship. Exactly, yeah, changing their yeah, behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and we're not talking about changing behaviour here, we're talking mm -hmm. about changing releasing the cause of emotion. Mm -hmm. That causes the behaviour. That's, yeah. right. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that true. rarely, if ever, happens. That's right. Yeah. And if that if, if that happened, lots of people would yeah, be true. dealing yeah. with lots of different things in their day to day life, and they'd feel a lot better in their relationships yeah. and a lot closer yeah. and everything as well, wouldn't they? Yeah. All right. Second thing. So that's the first thing. Humble. Do you understand what I mean by humble? Yeah. Making the choice that you really want to feel everything that's going on within you, whether it's painful or pleasurable. At the moment, the majority of you are very happy with the pleasurable ones, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to the painful ones, how are you feeling? What Do you really ones? want those two? Mm -hmm. The majority of you are feeling at the moment, and this can easily change, but at the moment the majority of you are feeling, I'm not quite sure about this painful stuff, AJ, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Because how many of you know there must be some painful things inside? that you've been bottling up for sometimes years, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so humble would mean experiencing it all. What's the next thing we need? Next thing we need... Who doesn't like that word? Love it. Mm. What I mean by pray is I mean to have a feeling in your heart directed towards God, that you want to know God's truth in your life. Now, notice I'm not saying pray to know your own truth. I'm saying pray for God's truth. Why am I saying that? Well, all of us have what we believe is the truth. Right? But the problem is, the thing that keeps us distant from God is that God knows it's not true. Right? So while I'm holding on to a truth within myself that I think is true, but it's not actually God's truth, I'm never going to become more blissful and happy when it comes to my relationship with God. Does that make sense? Mm. And ironically, I'm never be going to become more happy and blissful in all of my relationships either. And you know why? Because all of your relationships were created by God, right, in the, in the broadest sense, through these laws that God has, which are all based on God's truth. So if you don't know God's truth, then you won't know how everything works to help you be more blissful and, and happy. Yeah. When you talk about praying for divine truth, are you talking generally or specifically? Yeah, let's look at specifically here. Right? Let's go back and rewind us back to that little example I gave with the male. He's come home and told his, his girl that he looked at five women today. And Came home drunk, is that right? Is that no, 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 not drunk. He was totally sober. If he was drunk, the girl would just say, oh, he might have drunk, he, was, he didn't know what he was doing, right? Yeah. No, this guy knew, knew what he was doing completely. Comes home, 
five women he's checked out today and he thinks they look pretty good. Now, if the, if this, if the lady involved in this prays for divine truth, what will she be doing? She'll be saying to herself first, all right, I know there's this law called the law of attraction. I've attracted a man who looks at other women. Now, why have I attracted a man who looks at other women? There must be something inside of me. If she's not already feeling her emotions, she could go down this track, right? Of feeling there must be something inside of me that causes me to attract this man. Now, if I long to know what that is, I'm now praying for divine truth. If I'm longing to know what is going on inside of me that causes me to attract this event into my life, then I'm now praying for divine truth. And you know what? The instant you pray for divine truth, within a very, very short period of time, usually within an hour or a minute even sometimes, you will get it. If you really want it, you will get it. That's how, that's how God works. God wants to answer. Right? God doesn't want to keep you at bay. God wants to answer. But it's based on you having a complete and sincere longing. So if you long for divine truth in that particular instance, you will look very honestly at what's going on inside of yourself because you know there's a law called the law of attraction that has attracted this man who's feeling this way inside to your life, into your life. Now, if the guy is looking at wanting to find divine truth, he would sit down with you and he would go through his own emotions. What, what, was, what did he feel when he was walking along the road and checking her out? What was he feeling in here? He will start being honest about that. And as he's being honest about that, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? He's really praying for divine truth at that point. He's longing to know God's truth, not his own, God's truth about what this situation is all about. Because if he ignored it and just said, oh, my truth is that I'm just attracted to lots of women, you know, you've got to sow your seed and all that kind of stuff. If he went down that track, he'd be in his own <laughs> truth perhaps, but certainly not in God's, right? Would he? So what he needs to do is ask himself what is God's truth here. I need to feel his emotions, look at the whole situation. His, God's truth may be that this man has no desire whatsoever for his partner. That might be the truth. Yeah. And he needs to face that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he? Yeah. And he needs to look at why he's married a woman or within a partnership with a woman that he really does not desire with all of his heart. Mm -hmm. right? Or his truth may be even more like difficult to access. It might be quite simple too. It might be that when he was very, very young, he never received any attention from his mother. And now the only way that he feels like he can be a man is to get attention from women. That could be driving him. And he needs to feel about that. Right? There could be lots of different things that are driving him. But if both are praying for divine truth, both are longing for the truth that God would give them in their own heart, can you see how much simpler that would make the whole situation? Would we be fighting by this point? Do you think about the situation? If I'm humble, and I've done that as well now, do you think we'd be fighting with each other if there's in a partnership with that event? Wouldn't there be too much upset going for two people to settle down and go through this calmly? And uh... It's not about going through it calmly. It's about actually connecting with the causal emotions. I can guarantee you, if the lady connects with her causal emotions, she won't be feeling calm. She'll be crying about <coughs> some of these causal things from it. If the guy does the same thing, he'll be crying too, probably. And they'll be able to work through their emotions that way and feel them. And that's fine. Could you, rec could you receive a, if you if you're in an emotional storm, could you really receive a, a, a message from God in that? I would have thought the totally. static would be too great. No, no. It's through your emotional storms that you receive messages. That's where the truth is in these emotional storms. What happens if only one, one of the partners is actually praying for divine truth and trying to work through their emotions and the other's not? So let's say the guy comes home, right, and he says those things to you and, uh, and, and, it, you, and you get really upset, to feel really upset. Right? And you say, don't you think there's something in that life? Like, you're starting to feel your emotions and you're starting to own it, but you're also saying to him, don't you feel there's something in that? And he's saying, no, I'm fine with that. Ooh. Let's go to bed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, if the lady was in her emotional truth, she would still allow herself to go through that process. 
of connecting to the causal emotion that caused this attraction. Now, not only the man who spreads his sexual energy, but now she's also got a man who's callous about it. <laughs> oh, so she's got two different emotions now that she's being confronted with. Now, if she allows herself to experience those emotions, right, in the end, she can release the causal emotions within herself right, that, that, that she feels to make her feel upset about it. And she can get to a point, actually, where she can actually look at the person with love and make a choice. Does she want to stay with a man? And it won't be based on anger. Understand? It won't be based on anger or resentment or any of the other emotions. It will just be based on love. Do I want to be with a man who's willing to reject his sexual energy to others? Or am I willing to be patient and see whether he works through that particular emotion sometime over the coming months? But when the, part, the woman what works through her emotion and gets to that point, does that have a positive effect on the partner? Certainly. Do you think, mm. do you think her crying and dealing with causal emotions in herself, when she's not blaming him, she's actually dealing with all the emotions inside of herself about her child. Do you think that, of course, is going to have an effect on him? Mm -hmm. He's going to come home a lot of nights seeing her crying. Mm -hmm. But what's he going to do? One or two things. Walk back out. He's going to get angry, isn't he? Or upset with mm -hmm. her. Or he's going to what? Just say, what's wrong? What can we do? Exactly. He will say he will look at himself more closely. One of those two things, right? What happens if he says, for goodness sake, get a grip on yourself. I'm sick of you crying and feeling your emotions. So is he being loving to you? No. No? So why are you choosing to stay in a relationship now that's unloving to you? That's another emotion, isn't it? So you need to deal with that emotion. You've come face to face with the fact now that you have your husband or partner, not only is he, is he looking at other women and giving sexual energy to them, but now he's really callous with you as well. That's what he's telling you. And why aren't you willing to face up to that? So you say, why are you being like that to me? It's not about no, no, see, it's not about me asking him why he's being like that. Not at all. What it's about is acknowledging he is like that. Acknowledge the truth. He is like that. He is treating you badly. Don't go down the why. You go down the why, it makes you totally powerless, to be honest. Honestly. You think about it. Every time you go down the why, what do you do? You start to hope that he's going to somehow connect to something, aren't you? Right? And what happens then? It is what it is. Right now, it is what it is. You need to either be in a state of enough love to deal with that, or leave. With love. With love. Either way. Deal with your emotions first. Yeah. Have exactly. a big cry and do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't let you cry, you'll need to leave so that you can cry. Mm -hmm. Let yourself deal with the causal emotions of the attraction. Really deal with it. You see, a lot of times what happens in our lives, the reason why we, dis we don't allow ourselves to deal with our causal emotions is because we know that if we deal with them, we're going to change our life. Mm -hmm. And we're afraid of changing our life sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. It generally happens around the same time. So you're looking at change and looking at difference and looking at acceptance, all that within yourself as well as the good things, yeah. as well as trying to work through the other things. So That's right. It's really, really tough. It is tough. It is mm. tough. So I'm not saying that it's easy, but it is simple. Because mm. there's only three things you need to do to do it. But it's, so it's simple to understand, but it's not easy. Well, I'm just learning that I've spent about two years, I used to get very angry yep. thinking that that's not the way to deal with things, so yep. this new age thing of you send them love and don't get angry and all I've done, I'm getting all these emotions that are coming up here. Because you can feel while we're talking about it. Twirling you... around inside me and because instead of dealing with the emotion I've actually Washed it more, and I'm wondering why. Because I've been sending all this love and whatever that I'm still attracting even so, more. That's right. Yeah. See, this is the problem with this new age philosophy: mm. <laughs> is that you will keep attracting more of the same while you're not dealing with the causal emotion. Mm. It's actually the dealing of the causal emotion that changes everything. And it's not, it's not sending, you know this idea of sending more love is a fictitious state too, by the way. Yeah. What am I feeling inside if I'm feeling angry? Is it love? No. Not at that moment, is it? It's angry. I'm angry. 
and I'm covering over, remember I'm covering over some fears and all that kind of stuff inside myself. I need to feel them. That's the real thing I need to do. Not send them love. Feel what I'm feeling. If I feel what I'm feeling, I'm actually being love right at that moment. Right? And you don't have to send anything then. You're owning it yourself. Now in owning it, I'm not saying your life might not change, because it certainly will change. Any relationships that are unloving towards you, you will eventually leave. Right? You will. You will automatically leave. So, so with myself and Mary, at the moment I leave Mary every week around about. Because <laughs> at times the relationship is not loving. And at those times I leave. And I tell her I'm going to come back when it's loving. <laughs> Right? And and over the last four or four or five weeks, Mary's been very loving in owning all of her emotion now, and owning all of how she feels. And as a result of that, you know, there's a much stronger attraction because both of us owning our emotions is very powerful. Both of us owning our truth is very powerful. Yeah. So I'm not saying that any time you leave a partner, it's going to be permanent. If it's permanent. And you're doing it out of anger, is it love? No. no. So you've got more to work on there, right? If, it, if, it, if you're doing it because you're just so frustrated. Let yourself feel the causal emotions come up. Let yourself feel those and experience those. As you experience those, what will happen is everything around you will begin changing. And it will all change for the better if I'm dealing with the causal emotion. What happens when those emotions are really deep-seated? And it's the same as if they surface. Uh, usually if they deep seep it, we need to look at our fears that cover over. And there's a discussion that I did a few weeks ago about fear being your friend. And, and fear is a great way to access your underlying emotions. Because if you notice what your fears are, then you'll see why you block your emotion. Right? So let's say in a, I'm in a relationship as a woman. And I've not had a work job now for 20 years because I've had four children and brought up the children, but my husband's been off working. So I've not had a job for 20 years. And I'm really, you know, I'm now dealing with some causal emotion with my husband. Right? And it's come bringing up lots of things, and I'm starting to realise actually that my husband doesn't really love me. So I've got to the point now where I realise that. What fears do you reckon might start coming up in that scenario? Well, if you left, you'd have to find a job. You'd have to have some way. How am I going to support myself? Yeah. That's a fear. Where mm. am I going to go? And live? Where am I going to live? Rental properties. Yeah, I've never done that for 15 years or whatever. Can't How go home that? to mum and dad. No, I because I'd probably pass by now. Yeah. Right? Education training. Thank you. Yeah, what, what a, you know, what, my whole life's going to change now. Can you can you see that? Mm. What are my fears that are being brought up now? I if I live in those fears, I'm not going to leave. If I live in a state of truth, I will have to leave. Mm. If I love myself, I will have to leave. Mm. Right? And I'd be willing to experience every emotion of finding a new job. Willing to experience every emotion of, you know, every single one of those things that I'm afraid of. I will experience. And do you think in the end you're going to be a much better person? Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Feel empowered. Yeah, and it's not about woman power no, or, or man power or anything like that. It's about you just feeling connected with yourself so much now that you know you don't actually need another person. So relationships are not about needing another person. Relationships are completely about desiring the other person. Do you understand the difference? <laughs> if I need the other person, I have an emotional injury within me. If I desire the other person to give love, then I'm just in the state of giving love to that person, and that's the person I want to give love to. Mm -hmm. Relationships in the end are going to be, for all of you, at some point in your future, whether here or in the spirit world, are going to be just about what you can give to the other person. It won't be about what you get. <coughs> because you'll be in such a good state yourself that you don't feel like you need anything. That makes you more attractive as well. Exactly. Yeah, so instead of projecting a neediness onto the other person, what you're doing is just giving to the other person, and the other person now also has the choice they can make as well. Do they want to give or do they desire to give in return or not? And that's what a relationship in the end is all about. But the problem is, 
that many of us have these emotional injuries that if the other person doesn't need me, then what's going to keep him with me? Or if she doesn't need me, what's going to keep her with me? Like, and so you see a lot of relationships being created where if, if, if the woman doesn't need something from the guy, the guy feels very insecure, or vice versa. Right? And the truth is, in the future, you will stay in your relationships just because you desire. Just because you desire that person. No one else, that person. Yeah. And it's a beautiful state to be in. What's the third thing? Notice I've put being humble and the truth before this part. There's a reason for that, and that is that if I'm not humble, divine love won't enter. The reason why it can't enter me is because if I'm not experiencing my emotions that oppose love, then how can love flow? Right? So if I've got an emotion inside of myself, let's say I have an emotion of I'm unworthy inside of me. I'm unworthy to connect to God inside of me. Let's say that emotion is sitting there. It'll be sitting in this area of my body, by the way. So I might be putting on a bit of fat around this area here and, and you know, things that are having trouble down there, maybe with my bowel or if I'm a woman with, you know, with all of, all of my feminine parts down there, I have start having trouble. And what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll be saying to God, really, from my soul, I'm really saying, I'm not worthy to get your love. But if I'm, if I'm willing to experience all of my emotions, then I'm mean willing to experience my unworthiness. Now, the instant I do that is the instant now that God's love can flow. Because I'm now willing to stop blocking the flow of love. Excuse me, could I just... I've, what I've been doing since viewing your uh, DVDs mm -hmm. is praying for divine love and asking <coughs> through the um, Holy Spirit uh, that um, my barriers and my blockages to receiving divine love are either uh, dissolved or uh, or there is some way that I can identify, given me some way to identify. Can't you approach it that way, right? So, well, that's the same thing. Yeah. I thought I was putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, the, barriers, the barriers to divine love are all here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And here. My inability to accept the truth in my life and my inability to experience all of my emotions. Mm -hmm. That's my barriers. So when, I start, when I'm having a longing to God to show me my barriers, I'm not receiving divine love at that point. I'm receiving divine truth at that point. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm wanting divine truth. I'm asking truth. for love, I'm, I'm asking for both at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what you're doing is asking for all three yeah. in that one prayer, if you like. Yeah. But, but to really ask for it, you've got to live it. Mm. It's not just a matter of just saying those the words in your mind. Mm. It's now when a situation hits you in the face, which they all do, generally, because we're in a state of error, so all of the truth hits us in the face and we're anywhere surprised. So when that issue hits us in the face, it's a matter of facing it, right? of actually coming to terms with it, being humble and experiencing it. Yeah. Right. Alright, so does everyone understand what this is now? This is longing to, to God, directing a longing to God for divine love, for God's love to enter you. Uh, just having an openness, open longing for that. Now, if you have an open longing for that, every time you receive divine love or every time you receive divine truth, you will have an emotional experience probably. Sometimes they'll be very, a lot of times, and more often, they'll become more and more joyful experiences. Where you're overwhelmed with joy, with tears of joy. Yes, yeah. I've, I've experienced Or you're overwhelmed with it. Now when you receive divine truth, you will often, also in the, if you're humble, you'll be releasing error. And when you're releasing error, you'll be overwhelmed with tears of grief. <laughs> and that will also be part of the process as well. Uh, and because we're choosing all of our own emotions, we're going to let ourselves be overwhelmed no matter what the emotion. Yeah. It might be grief, it might be, you know, it might be unhappiness and grief and sadness and terror and fear and all those emotions are all on the side that we're experiencing that are painful and what we'll need to do is allow ourselves to feel that. 
then on the pleasurable side there might be all sorts of other emotions, desire, longing, you know, even sexual longing, all those other emotions that we haven't allowed ourselves to feel completely. And we need to let ourselves experience that. Excuse me, where do bad dreams fit in this? Yeah. People have terrifying bad dreams. Uh, bad dreams are all about so triggering emotions that we are not facing in the day, in the day. So if you're having a series of bad dreams at any one point of time, or just a night where you have a bad dream, you need to look at it emotionally. There's an emotion that you wake up with generally off of a bad dream, and that's the emotion you're denying in your day to day life. You feel that emotion in your day to day life, but you're denying it, you're suppressing it. And your dreams are telling you what you're suppressing. So that's usually what a bad dream is. There are also other types of bad dreams where we've had a bad experience in the sleep state that we remember. But, but even those, the law of attraction are operating upon. Why would I have a bad experience that's triggered an emotion? Because the emotion is in me and I've attracted that experience. So either way, I need to feel the experience. Yeah, I thought it might have been, might have been a release or something like that. But well, it can trigger a release. Yeah, yeah. yeah, certainly. yeah certainly. So that could work in a positive way as well, like um, in regards to coincidence, like, or, you know, placing a path in front of you, like, if you're starting to get it right, then <clears throat> more things will line up, like me turning up here tonight, for example, um, this wouldn't have happened to be a day ago, but I probably asked for it, and here yeah. it is. Spot on. Yeah, that's the that's, so that's more, that's more things will line up in front as you become closer to being whole. Yeah, learn to trust these events that come into your life that are really positive and life's changing. But learn, and learn to follow your heart with those things. When you follow your desires and your passions, what happens is that all of a sudden these new things are opening up. And a lot of times the new things will shock you sometimes. Like, right now you're listening to a guy who thinks he's Jesus. Right? Now, how many of you would have thought a year ago that you'd even go along to a thing where you'd be listening to a guy who thought he was Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Some might have thought that, but a lot of you, I can feel, didn't feel that. Right? And yet you're here. So where, what's your law of attraction? Curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're attracted either to a crazy man or he might be Jesus. Right? <laughs> uh, just talking about dreams, in one of your DVDs, you mentioned that you might have already come to people in their dreams. Very often you do. I saw you in my dream. Yep. <laughs> and can I trust what you said to me to be true? Um, what did you, what did I say to you? Uh, you addressed one of my issues, that I would never be alone. Yep. That's what you told me. Yeah. Uh, but I was also saying that to you, to trigger an emotion that you do feel inside of yourself. And what's that? A bit of afraid of that being alone. Yeah. 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 So, you see a lot of times, um, like things will be said to you in the dream state that are true. Like, you will never be alone is a true statement. You are never alone, in fact. But, yeah, but there is still some emotion that's also telling you there's still emotion, some emotion in your sleep state and in wake state that you need to experience being alone. It's funny because I'm not alone. No, but, but the feeling. Fear of being alone. It's the feeling, yeah. And that's the feeling you need to let yourself feel. I've often thought with like of being alone, um, I think it's okay. It's the fear is actually being lonely. Like yep. is it the They're two different two Yeah, two they things. are different feelings. Mm -hmm. So yeah. but you are, to be honest with you, you are not okay with being alone, you are alone at the moment. Yeah. You have told yourself you are yeah. because that's where you are. See, a lot of times what we do is we tell ourselves we're okay with this because we're actually living it. Yeah. <laughs> what else are we going to do? Not be okay with it? Like, a lot of times if we just allowed ourselves to be not okay with it, we would tune into what's underneath that's creating it. And that's what we need to do, just tune into what's underneath. So instead of telling yourself that it's okay to be alone, it's far better to tell yourself what's the truth. Do you feel really it's okay to be alone? And at the core level, most of us don't feel that yet. You know, we need to release some emotions to get to the point where we feel that. And if I am alone right now, there's a very good chance that the emotion, the core emotion, is not released. You follow me? Because as soon as I release it, I will start attracting people in my life and I won't feel alone anymore. Or I won't be alone anymore. So look really honestly at the law of attraction. 
Huh? But I really am quite happy being alone. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> because, but I'm not alone because that's only in a physical sense. It's, you know, if, I think Do you want me to go to your emotion publicly? Because <laughs> um, I can. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, the, the truth is, is a bit different to what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. That's right. good to know. <coughs> Let's go deeper into it. Why do, you, why do you feel you're happy being alone? What happens when you're with somebody? You tell me that. Um, I can't be myself, I guess. Yep. Or that's part of it. That's a big part of it. Yeah. You're not allowed to be yourself when you're in a relationship. Mm. So of course you feel like you're happier alone. Mm. But that's not true. What you're just happier is being yourself. <laughs> you follow me? Mm -hmm. So you actually, the reason why, you're telling yourself one thing, but in reality you're happy to be yourself. But I can guarantee you right at the moment, if you let yourself, if you let yourself feel about it, you would be happiest being yourself and being with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And them allowing you to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. That, that connects with you a bit yeah. more? So I guess that's because I'm probably not breaking down these barriers and the self that I am now is like that, you know, ignorance and bliss kind of thing. Well, yeah, what's happening is when you get with a, with a partner, you feel so, so much like you have to do what they say to do or feel to do that you lose yourself. You follow me? And so you tell yourself you're happy to be alone because you can actually be yourself, but what would even be better for you is to be in a partnership where you, where you feel you can't be yourself and actually start being yourself confront that emotionally. Does that make sense? Yeah. And when you do that, you'll then be able to create a relationship where not only are you happy being yourself, but because you're being yourself, you create ex you've attracted a, a person in your life who is exactly allowing you to be yourself. 